So this video is going to be working on the doors and the drawers for the cabinet. And like I said in the last video, the, the styles and the rails for this door are going to match the face frame, which is two inches wide. So these are the tail ends of those cutoffs I had from the face frame. I have a stop set up on my rate alarm saw and I could cut all of my parts down. Now you can make these doors a little oversized and trim them. If you're not used to making doors, I recommend that. That's how I used to make them but I've made enough of these at this point. I usually make them close to size. These are inset doors, so there's probably gonna be a little bit of trimming, but I basically make them to fit the opening. Since these are really big doors, I decided to do a bridle joint, which I sometimes um, interchangeably call a saddle joint, part uh, things that go on horses, I guess. And um, I'm gonna cut those on the, the table saw. Now I have a fancy tenoning jig that will do this for me, but I used, before I got this, someone gave me this jig. I used to just use um, a couple pieces of plywood screwed at a, a 90 degree angle that slid on top of my table saw fence in order to cut these. So you don't need a fancy jig to do this. Now I'm going up two inches and I'm cutting I broke the, the joint into about thirds. This is three quarter inch plywood. So I'm cutting about a third of the middle away. And then I'll have those two flanges on the side. This is a much sturdier joint than the regular tongue and groove you make for these doors. And like I said, whenever I make larger doors, meaning either in width or height or both, I prefer this joint because I find it's, it's going to be much sturdier over time than just a tongue and groove. So pretty simple process. I had this offset so I could flip all my pieces and cut my two outer edges. You saw me do that with the jig. And then I could just move it to the center and remove the bulk of that inner flange. It leaves me with two little pieces on the edge that I'll chisel out. If you want, you could cut out that whole inner flange on the table saw. Then I set up a stop on the radial arm saw. Once again, this is going to be a two inch joint and I'm just gonna kerf cut those two edges away. It will leave me with the a center portion that will fit inside the joint I just made on the table saw. You saw in the beginning, I always make a test cut for all this stuff. If these end up too thick, it's not that big of a deal. You could change it, but if these joints are too loose, it just won't work and you'll have to recut. So I do a test joint. I set up the table saw and the radial arm saw, which is nice about having this radial arm saw. I could do both of these um, at the same time without making changes to the saws. That's what I'm left with. I remove that little bit of kerf material with a chisel. I can clean it up nicely and get those joints to fit. So like I said, I cut these about the same size. The height of this cabinet is, is um, pretty accurate on both sides, meaning that it's square. So I actually cut this uh, made these doors a little bit smaller. You'll see in the video a little bit later that. So my reveal is already set for my height and, height, and I just have to change the width. And then that's how those dry fit together. You kind of prop it into place, make sure it's gonna fit. And then I'm going to put these aside because the inner panel is going to be quarter inch ply, which I'm also using for the bottoms of my, my, door, uh, my drawer boxes. And I wanna cut all that at the same time. So I'm gonna put these aside and use the leftover scrap of that quarter inch ply to fill these in. But that is what that joint looks like. Like I said, it's gonna be nice and sturdy and they fit into place pretty nicely. So the width is just about perfect. They kind of mate in the center. That will have to be trimmed with the hinges. You can see it's nice and, and following the line. And then I have the gap at the top, which will be my reveal for the top and the bottom. This method, cutting these to size right off the bat, only works if your opening is square. If your opening is not square and you're doing inset drawers, you're really gonna have to get um, clever with how you make these reveals accurate. So that's why I always stress the importance of making these face frames square. It just saves you so much time. So then I'm gonna start, what I'm making is basically a removable shelf that all of my drawer slides are gonna set on. The reason I'm doing this is, is I have to transport this cabinet quite a ways actually, and then also install it in this space, which I know is up um, a fairly tight flight of stairs. So carrying these large uh, carcasses up the stairs was already gonna be a challenge. Adding all the weight of the drawer slides and the boxes would be 
would it, it would just be too heavy. Um, so what I decided to do was make a removable piece that all my slides could fit on so they stay accurate. I don't have to um, unassemble any of that, but it will also make it so that um, it's the cabinets lighter to carry up the stairs. I have since installed this at this point so I can say that that worked out quite well so these inner pieces are going to sit on the inside edge of that face frame and then I'm just going to cut out dados for all of my shelves this top part here accounts for the face frame that overhangs the top edge of the cabinet and then I just simply split this up it's fairly simple math but you have to account for the thickness of the plywood so if you want you could pause um, on these dimensions and 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 get a closer look at all of that because especially with inset drawers it's really important that all of these face uh, these front faces are the same size or the eye will pick up the differences very quickly so I do lose some height in my drawer boxes doing it this way, but it's really not a ton of height and it's just gonna make life a lot easier. So once I had all that spacing, I took my two panels to the radial arm saw, put a dado stack in there, and I'm just cutting out my grooves. I prefer to do every any sort of joinery like this, perpendicular joinery with dados and rabbits, just makes for a much sturdier finished product. It's really important as I build this, as I transport this and put it back into place that this stays exactly the way it is or all of the reveals on my drawers are gonna be off. So I could cut both those pieces, move this down, set up my stop again and cut the rest of the grooves going all the way up. Using the stop will ensure that both panels are the same. So when I go to put my uh, horizontal pieces in, they line up perfectly. So then I'm bringing this back to the table saw and I'm going to cut some spacers. Like you saw in the video, there was a little bit of a gap because I want um, the way the slides I'm using have to be flush with the face frame. So this was about an inch and uh, I forget what it was, three eighths off of the, the side. So there was a little bit of a gap. So in order to have this um, flush in place, I'm just gluing some spacers on the back side of this. And then this cab, this carcass that I'm making will be permanently screwed into the sides of the cabinet. So you could kind of see how those spacers function there. And I'll put the screws through the face spacers into the cabinet, hold everything flush. And then that's what that looks like in place. Once I have those set up, I can measure in between and cut for the shelves. You can see from the front, everything is, is flush. This is just putting that other one in. All this plywood is also somewhat bowed. The quality of plywood nowadays is, is not the best. So then, like I said, when everything was in place, I can measure my mark. And th this bottom portion is also square, which means all of these are gonna be the same size. So that's also really important that that's square. Otherwise, all the face frames of my drawer boxes will have to be tweaked as well. And now I'm not doing full pieces of ply that you really don't need that. You just need a couple contact points for those slides to set, sit on. Usually those contact points, I have the front and the back. And then this can get screwed right into the side of that panel, which is nice using 12 inch slides, which don't have bottom mounts. So um, it also make a little save on materials and make it a little more lightweight. And then, like I said, these just slide right into place. I could uh, line up where my slides are gonna be, and then I could glue all of this together. So that is the removable carcass. You can see I have it pushed back a little bit from the face frame because I, I glued that together at that point and didn't want it to dry to the face frame. And then I'm making drawer boxes. I'm gonna go through this very quickly because this is the build where I made the how to buy drawer mount slides and make drawer boxes video so I don't have to go through it every time I'm making them because it is a longer process in the shop. But basically I have a dovetail jig. I prefer to put dovetails on my drawer fronts. I find them to be the, the most structural joint. And if you have this jig set up properly, it's a very quick process to repeatedly make these boxes as long as they're the same size. So I could go through and that, that my front edge and my front joint on all of these is going to be dovetails. 
And like I said, I made a full video of this process that if you want to get all the details, you can watch. And that is linked in the description with a couple other videos. And then I could add the bottom. Like I said, that's quarter inch uh, ply. And those are my four boxes. There's also a larger drawer on the other side, which I didn't film because it's, it's basically the same process, just a different size. So there's all my pieces. I can put these in place, make sure they fit. At this point, there was no glue on anything. Um, that's one of the reasons I like those. They hold themselves together. So then for this one, I'm going to route a groove for my panel. Usually I cut that on the table saw, but since this is a bridle joint, if I cut that groove on the table saw, it will go all the way through. So these drawer boxes, uh, these door fronts are holding themselves together. So I could use a, rab uh, the, a rabbiting bit in order to cut that. I had a cheaper bit that was burning the edges. So I found this slot cutter. So you buy the arbor for it and then the slot cutter separately. This is not a sponsored post or anything. If anything, I don't particularly love Bosch. Um, router bits. I've had some problems with the bearings overheating and blowing out on these, but I was in a bind and I needed something quickly and these were the ones that they sell close to close to where I live. So this doesn't have a movable bearing like some of these other pieces. It just has this larger silver washer that acts as, as the contact point against the wood. And I like the fact that it was a three blade slot cutter, so it's going to cut pretty quickly. And I did uh, enjoy the way this worked. I've only used it once, so take that uh, advice with a grain of salt. But I, it replaced that, that cheaper rabbiting bit that I had. And I could just cut that whole slot, and now I could cut my panel as well. So this was cheated toward the front a little bit. I didn't want a huge lip for that panel. That's that is the way I decided to do it. So you can see the back's a little bit thicker. The only problem with doing it this way is it leaves a round over edge at the bottom. So once you cut your panel, you have to round that over as well. But I already had this, uh, I'm reviewing, been reviewing this product for quite a while. So I already had it set up in my angle grinder. Very quickly can round over these panel edges and then that will slide right into, into my door. Can see how that fits. You do want a little bit of a gap, you won't see it, and then the panel can move inside that frame. It's the whole point of making these, these frame panel pieces so that that inner portion can move with the change of the seasons, the change of, of relative humidity. You could snap that all together, and then there are my door fronts. These were a little over, uh, I think, three feet tall. And then this is kind of the cabinet. Obviously, I'm going to get to the face frames for the drawers in the next video. I did install this. I have some photos. They're not great. This was a built-in closet, so it was a very small space to start with anyway. So getting photos was not the easiest, but I will have those. And there's only one more video after this, kind of tying everything together.